read the Bible, buddy. <laughs> yes! Well, there's this passage I got memorized. It's on a bit of vacation. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset by the sides by the selfish and the terror of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness. For he is truly his brother's keeper and the father of God. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brother. And you will know my name is the Lord. When I lay my vengeance upon you. Welcome to Aquarium Concepts. Thanks for stopping by the channel today. Hopefully I can earn a like and a subscribe. Uh, I appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me. Um, I got a wild, wild week. And it's been a wild week. And uh, man, I got a lot of content to get out this weekend. Such a busy weekend. I'm I'm so excited about this weekend. I almost put like like the cool YouTubers do. That stupid face of theirs on the, on the thumbnail of this video. But uh, I'm not quite popular enough to look that stupid yet, I don't think. So I'll, uh, I'll save that for later, maybe. But yeah, anyways, a lot's going on. I'm going to do a quick video here right now just to get a couple loose ends tied up. Um, and there's going to be some long videos coming out this weekend. Got a core council Twitter space I'll tell you about. Yeah, lots to get to, so let's get into it here. Market today. Corium's uh, trading at 44.84 cents. Sologenix 16 cents, XRP is coming in at 38.186 cents, and Bitcoin's at $21,702. Total crypto market caps just under that 1 trillion mark again. It's uh, going to be bounced around there for a little bit, I think, if not, uh, maybe even going down a little bit more. That's just my opinion. But um, gold coming in at 1865, it's been pretty much sideways. Silver 2196. And the DXY 103.630. We're watching that in the days ahead. Checking in on the Corium audit, sitting at 44% today. So after this week, uh, we're just under halfway there. So with uh, what we got just over a month and a bit left, uh, it seems like the timeline's looking good. Uh, some exciting news here Core Council is getting uh, Twitter space together. Uh, Saturday, February 11th, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's exciting. They're always uh, full, full of information. You never know who's going to pop in and and contribute. Uh, Bob Ross has been on. Rez has been on. Favio. So um, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a must listen to. I'll, I'll be uh, there for sure. I'm going to definitely cover it and I'll, I'll do a recap video on it. But I highly recommend listening to it and. If you have any questions, reach out to uh, Core Council and uh, or be present in that space tomorrow and, and get your questions answered. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's dive into Corium Economics, so it should be an interesting one. Looking quite forward to it. Otto Nino, he's been putting out some good. Uh, content on Twitter since he came aboard on the Sologenic uh, securities marketing team. Uh, today he makes quotes a tweet and makes comments, still is a real good bet. The best is yet to come. And he's referencing this uh, Cointelegraph article it says the collision between traditional finance and crypto worlds has only just begun. So yeah, Otto's uh, I think going to be a really good addition to the Sologenic uh, ecosystem. I uh, did a, a brief look into his um, his career leading up to, to now on a previous video, so you should look for that. Uh, 
yeah, he's uh, got a lot to contribute to to Sologenic and, and I think in in concert uh, Corium too. Okay, now it's time to dive into the weeds again here a bit. So back onto this uh, core DAO core issue. I just did a video on this yesterday and uh, I had this post to go along with it. Very deceptive marketing taking advantage of Corium investors. This is an ad for core DAO, not affiliated at all, but tell me where those words are. It's getting worse every day. And I tagged Bob, Reza, Corium official. And, you know, I won't go through it again, but, you know, it's, it's just more of this, basically. Deposit core, you know, there's core again. Here's the actual core DAO symbol, but it's not even in its proper form that the, the uh, symbol has. It's supposed to be highlighted in gold, so they just put it in black and white. So the only color on the screen is the green, which most people are affiliating with Corium, of course. So there's, uh, I don't know, something... Something smells, and you know, when where there's smoke, there's fire. So I don't know. There's something's, some something's just not sitting right with this whole issue. And uh, I, so I looked into it. Uh, a subscriber and good friend of the channel sent me a screen cap from uh, Bitru, and uh, yeah, wait till you see this. It's just going to the next level here. So yeah, question gave me uh, some answers here too. So. Um, I looked into it a little bit further after he sent me the screenshot there and uh, here we are on the BitTrue site. First thing that you see of course is Core Deposit Contest. Deposit 80,000 USDT, look at all that green. There, There is the proper Core DAO logo in this picture at least, so that's good. So this contest is running February 8th to the 15th. You know, so that's all fine and dandy. We're pushing it hard. There's the second slide on the top of the screen. First thing you see, core USDT, zero trading fees. You know, it's got the symbol in it at least, right? That's not too bad, but still, you know, still causing some confusion. So this is the BitTrue page for core USDT. Core DAO, you see it's ticker is core. Not too much info on it here, no market cap, no circulating plan, nothing like that. But oh wait, their website, www.corium.com. Well, that's interesting. I hit the link and it does in fact uh, take you to corium.com. Introduction, Corium is a third generation layer one blockchain with smart contracts built to serve as a core. Well, isn't that interesting? So uh, somebody hits that buy button they're thinking they're buying Corium. Why wouldn't they? Look at that, right? Look at that. You know, and, and many people think that, uh, you know, they're at, hey, I can stake my core right on. Does it does it qualify for the snapshot? Is Core DAO a governing token for the Corium network? Like, it's just causing you know unnecessary confusion. I'm surprised that Bitru would be contributing to this confusion. I thought they were a friend of the XRP Ledger community, and and uh, yeah, so. I was quite surprised. So I dove a little deeper into the uh, BitTrue site and and their announcements and here Corium, ticker core, listing on BitTrue. March 3rd, 2022. BitTrue, welcome to core. Corium is a third generation layer one blockchain built to serve as a core infrastructure of the future. Okay, so that's good. Almost a full year ago. And what do we have here? January 28th, 2023. Core DAO name update. BitTrue will update all mentions of Core DAO, Core DAO on BitTrue to the name of Core DAO, ticker Core. We have closed the deposit. So on the same day, they announced that mentions of Corium Core on BitTrue to the name of Corium Corium we will suspend all core related activities. And you know, I clicked on them both. It just tells you when it comes into effect. But so they've been trading Corium for a year on BitTrue and along comes this core DAO a couple weeks ago and just, yeah, no, let's, uh, let's just change it all. Uh, it's just, something's not sitting right. I don't know, like it, I, call me crazy. I'd like to know your comments and under the, video like what you think about it like am i just 
look at barking up the wrong tree here, but I mean, to me, something just stinks. There's some kind of shenanigans going on here, it seems to me. So yeah, I'd love to know your opinion, so leave, leave a comment below the video. So I've been a BitTru uh, member for quite a few years, did quite a bit of trading on it some time ago. Um, so I figured, well, I'll reach out and tell them my concerns and see what they say. So this evening I sent a email and it just says the switching of the ticker core to Corium to accommodate Cordell's bizarre campaign to muddy the waters for investors. It is even more bizarre that Bitru, who I assumed was close to the XRPL community, seemed to be going along with this strange agenda. I'd love to hear any comment on the reasoning for this if possible. Who requested this change? Do you think Bitru has alerted investors adequately, as Cordell certainly doesn't mind capturing Corium investors by using deceptive practices? Links and content should be updated long before now. Please see attached. I look forward to hearing from you. So I, I sent uh, the, the screen caps that I just previously shown here, and they surprisingly uh, responded fairly quickly. Unfortunately, it wasn't, you know, addressing most of what I said. So this is their reply. Dear users, sorry for the inconvenience. Please be informed that the coins that we list on Bitru, CoreDAO, are largely decided by the voice of our community. If enough people ask for it, then we consider adding it. So we'll keep your request in mind for the future. I wasn't questioning them adding CoreDAO, I'm questioning the name change, but that's fine. Please note though, we have many users asking for many different coins, so it's impossible for us to say when or if we'll be able to add your particular request. Missed the point completely on that one, I'm not too sure what, where they got that from. Regarding the links and content that should be updated, we will put your voice to one of our considerations for the next improvement and try our best to improve our services in helping the problems that our customers face when using our system. To that end, we would appreciate your input on this matter. Best regards. Well, I gave them my input. I asked them a bunch of questions. They didn't answer any of them, and they obviously didn't hear any of my input. So I'm pretty disappointed in Bitru. I gave them a chance to give me some kind of answer. and um, Obviously, it's somewhat of a form letter, I'm sure, just an auto response came pretty quick but um, you know I don't know I'm, I'm pretty concerned like it, it seems like something fairly deceptive is happening here um, and you know I don't think Bitru's helping the situation by by what they're what they're doing here today on their screen so uh, I think the least they could do is alert uh, the users a little bit better than they are like maybe right underneath these ads for buying core and, and you know taking them to a page that says buy core now and you and then it's got a link to Corium.com. It's two totally different technologies. You know, like CoreDAO is a uh, proof of work system. So, you know, it's a, it's a Bitcoin based technology. So like, I, you know, to be comparing it with Corium is just, it's just hideous. It's, it's bizarre. So I, I'm surprised that uh, the marketing team at uh, Corium isn't saying much. Well, I mean, maybe they are in the background, I guess, but, uh, you know, I, I would. You know the thing I say, like from for me this point forward, I can't keep going around saying core. So, you know, I'm not telling anybody what to do. But from this point forward, you'll never see me use the core symbol. I'm I'm going to use Corium, because uh, you know by us using core, it's, it's almost like we're promoting this project. And from what I see, you know, I wouldn't touch this project with a ten foot pole. There's obviously some kind of bot campaign. There, you know, the way they you know went to a million and a half followers from from nothing on Twitter, you know, didn't hear from them, all of a sudden they got a million and a half followers. It's just everything stinks about this thing that I have. And so, I mean, it's one thing that it's deceiving core core investors buying the wrong product, but it's sending, you know, potentially um, good core investor, Corium investors to buy a potential scam token or definitely at the at minimum uh, to a token whose uh, uh, founders or marketers uh, don't have many morals from what I could see so it's pretty concerning to me I, I'm just surprised that the, um, the Corium team's not more vocal about it with uh, especially with a, an exchange like BitTru well that's about it for today I just wanted to get a few of those important issues out uh, before the weekend here as I said tomorrow's got core council having a Twitter space it's going to be a must must here 
keep an ear out for an eye out for a video follow up after that if you just want to recap i'll definitely have a recap of the core council up later in the day and i got a couple very big uh, deeper dives into some things that have been percolating in the xrp and sologenic and corium ecosystem that really needs to be uh, exposed or not exposed but just have a light shone on it a little bit i think there's uh, um, a lot going on that I, I think is getting missed under all the, the hype and the FUD that you're hearing on the on Twitter and on forums and such. So yeah, I should have a couple hours worth of content coming out this weekend. It's getting pretty late here. I uh, really appreciate all your support. I got a little video. I'm going to close this one out uh, sent to me by one of our subscribers on the channel. Uh, so yeah, have a good weekend everybody. Hope to uh, provide you some valuable content here. If I did, please like, share as much as you can. We want to grow this channel and, and our next goal is 1,000 subs. So we quickly went from 100 to 200 in one week. So that's pretty exciting. I really, really appreciate the support. So yeah, hit that like and subscribe. Peace and prosperity to you all. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule, and that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth, and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. Because this is not a business where you take polls, it's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. Warren, what do you do that's different than 90% of the money managers who are in the market? Certainly most of the professional investors focus on what the stock is likely to do in the next year or two, and they have all kinds of, all kinds of uh, uh, arcane uh, 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 methods of, of, of approaching that, but uh, uh, they do not really think of themselves as owning a piece of a business. But the real test of whether you're investing from a value standpoint or not is whether uh, you care whether the stock market is open tomorrow. Uh, if you're making a good investment, in a security, it shouldn't bother you if they close down the stock market for five years. All the ticker tells me is the price. And I can look at the price occasionally to see whether the price is outlandishly cheap or outlandishly high. But, but prices don't tell me anything about a business. Business, uh, business figures themselves tell me something about a business. But the price of a stock doesn't tell me anything about a business. I would rather value a stock or a business first and not even know the price so that I'm not influenced by the price in establishing my valuation. And then look at the price later to see whether it's way out of line with what my value is. So Buffett chose to stay in this world, Omaha, Nebraska, where corn grows just minutes from downtown. Now, Omaha is a nice town, but nobody claims it's a world financial center. Here, the only thundering herd is actually on four feet. Don't you find Omaha a little bit off the beaten track for the investment world? Well, believe it or not, uh, we get mail here, and uh, we get periodicals, and we get all the facts needed to make decisions. And unlike Wall Street, you'll notice we don't have 50 people coming up and whispering in our ear that we should be doing this or that this afternoon. Do you appreciate the lack of stimulation I like, here? I, I like the lack of stimulation. We get facts, not stimulation here. <laughs> How can you stay away from Wall Street? Well, if I were on Wall Street, I'd probably be a, a lot poorer. At, uh, uh, you get overstimulated in Wall Street, and uh, uh, you hear lots of things. and. And you, you, may, you may shorten your focus, and a short focus uh, is not conducive to, uh, to long profits. And uh, here I can just focus on what businesses are worth. And I don't need to be uh, in Washington to figure out what the Washington Post uh, newspaper is worth, and I don't need to be in New York to figure out what uh, some other company is worth. It's, it's, it's simply, it's an intellectual process. Well, and and the, less, the less static there is in that intellectual process, really the better off you are. What is the intellectual process? The intellectual process is, is defining your level, defining your area of competence in valuing businesses, and then within that area of competence, finding whatever sells at the, at, at the cheapest price in relation to value. And there are all kinds of things I'm not competent to value, but there are a few that I am competent to value. Have you ever bought a technology company? No, I really haven't.
In 30 years of investing, not one. I haven't understood any of them. <laughs> so you haven't ever owned, for example, IBM? Which Never owned IBM. Great, Marvelous great. company. I mean, it's a sensational company, but I haven't owned IBM. And so here is this uh, technological revolution going on, and you're not going to be a participant. Gone right past me. <laughs> is that all right with you? It's okay with me. <laughs> are there I, don't have to, I don't have to make money in every game. I mean, I don't know what cocoa beans are going to do. I don't, you know, I, there are all kinds of things I don't know about. And that may be too bad, but... Uh, you know, why should I know all about them? I haven't worked that hard on them. In the securities business, you literally every day have thousands of the major American corporations offered to you uh, at a price and a price that changes daily. And you don't have to make any decisions. You have to make, uh, nothing is forced upon you. So you, there are no called strikes in the business. The pitcher just stands there and throws balls at you. And uh, if you're playing real baseball and it's between the knees and the shoulders, you either swing or you get a strike call on you. If you get too many calls on you, you're out. In the securities business, you sit there and they throw uh, U.S. Steel at 25 and they throw General Motors at 68 and you don't have to swing at any of them. They may be wonderful pitches to swing at, but if you don't know enough, you don't have to swing. And you can sit there and watch thousands of pitches and finally you get one right there where you want it, something that you understand, and then you swing. And uh, So you might not swing for six months. You might not swing for two years. Isn't that boring? It would it would bore most people and, and certainly boredom is a... Is a is a problem with most professional money managers. If they if they if they try to sit, to sit out an inning or two, not only do they get somewhat antsy, but their clients are start yelling, they start yelling, "Swing you bum!" You know, from the from the stands, and that's very tough for people to do. Warren, your your approach seems so simple. Why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think partly because it is so simple. That uh, the academics, for example, focus on on. Uh, um, all kinds of variables. Partly by, because by academics, you mean of professors of right, finance? Right. Yeah, the, the and data business, is there. In business school? Sure, the, and the data is there. So they focus on whether if you buy stocks on Tuesday and sell them on Friday, you're better off, or if you buy them in election years uh, and, and sell them in other years, you're better off, or if you buy small companies. There are all these variables because the data are there. And, and they've learned how to manipulate data. And as a friend of mine says, that to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And once you have these skills, you just are, are, are dying to. Uh, uh, to utilize them in some way, but they aren't important. Uh, if I were being asked to participate in a business opportunity, would it make any difference to me whether I bought it on a Tuesday or a Saturday or an election year or something? It's not what a businessman thinks about in buying businesses. So why think about it when buying stocks? Because stocks are just pieces of businesses.